Today we'll take a look at AJA Kumo routers and the 64x64 is the largest one. Then you have 32x32, 16x16 and 16x4. All these great routers can be controlled by Skahoy panels. We have shown that in different videos. So in this video, I'll focus on something new, which is how you can connect our Ethernet GPI link box to a Kumo router. And that will give you access to controlling the router using uh, wires, basically. You can connect a switch to an input on a GPI box, or you can read the state of a route out um, on the contact closure output on the Ethernet GPI link. So we have that product in two versions as well. So you can have an option for a, uh, a, a double version. So uh, the regular one has eight inputs and eight outputs. So the dual version has 16 inputs and 16 outputs. So I thought in this video, let's make a, a small unboxing event so we can see how this product works with the Kumo router. And that's what we are going to dive right into now. The things I brought for this unboxing session is our Kumo router at the office. I also have a small uh, printed circuit board I use for testing with the Ethernet GPI link. And then of course the Ethernet GPI link box, which we will now open. So let's see what's inside. Okay, so inside this Ethernet GPI link box, we find a USB cable. This is uh, very useful for configuration with the, the laptop. Um, in fact, I think I have another one, so I'll just grab that instead of opening this one. But that's a micro USB cable. We have Ethernet cable. I already have Ethernet right here. And this Ethernet cable is PoE powered. So the Ethernet GPI link box itself is right here. And uh, I can plug it in and you'll see that it's powering up just shortly. So we have a power supply, also a plug for whichever part of the world you're in. And then there's a small welcome brochure that will tell you how to get started with the product. It will um, point you to our firmware application so you can set the IP address. And it will also tell you what is the configuration that you got out of the box because our products, they are so configurable that there's really no answer to, oh, does it work with this or that? It depends on the configuration, which is why we ship you a note that will explain what configuration is on the unit when it arrives at your doorstep and also what other configuration options there were at the time of assembly. And of course, if more configurations has come in the meantime, they are available from our online database very easily. So you'll see all this in a moment, how we will configure the Ethernet GPI link. So uh, I'll just put this aside and um, we just have the Ethernet GPI link right here. So this board will fit onto the connector. So if you look at the connector and uh, let's just uh, take a close up look at, on that. So um, the connector is actually compatible with a Blackmagic Atom GPI and Tally box. And um, so on, on this one, I will plug in this board. And the cool thing about this board is that I have a number of buttons I can push, which will trigger the input. So that is like taking two wires and or the wire on one of the inputs and short uh, circuiting it to, to ground on, on the device. And um, if I apply power to this one, I have another neat feature of this little utility board, which is that it will light up the LEDs. Now, if I press these buttons, you can see the LEDs will light up and pressing these buttons will correspond to uh, the relays inside the box flipping. So I now uh, take the USB micro cable and attach here because I want to get to the configuration of this device. So I'll just hook this into my laptop. Let me see like this. And then on my laptop, I will open the Skahoy firmware application. And you see it right here. By the way, on my laptop, you also see in the background, uh, we have the, uh, the web interface of the Kumo router and we'll use that shortly so we can see what happens on the GPI box as I, I change routes on the Kumo router. But first is looking at the Skahoy firmware uh, updater. We see that it detected my Ethernet GPI link box and I can now um, go to online configuration and that's what we need to do because we have to add support for the Kumo um, router in this case. So I'm not online, but I will be shortly. So I'll just enable my Wi-Fi. Mm. 
There we go. Okay, we see a whole lot of different uh, routing options right here. We have one called HAA Kumo routing, joystick override defined fallback routing. There is a description of what to do. So we could actually take this one as, um, you know, as, as a starting point, or I could just show you exactly what we could do if we go the manual route and then simply choose new. So I'm now at a new configuration and I want to give it a name. So say AJA Kumo test video, because it's for this video. And I go, oh, sorry, I go to device course. So what we need to do now is to add Kumo support to the device. And this is like installing an app on your iPhone, basically. So look at coreskahoy.com as your app store for your Skahoy controller. And then you kind of have the picture of what we're dealing with here. So I now search, uh, oh, I shouldn't, that was wrong, that was wrong. Um, like I just wanted to search on this page for Kumo. Eh, anyway, it's just right there. So I scroll down this list, I select Kumo and save settings. In fact, you could add more Kumo routers so that the same GPI box could actually connect to up to eight different Kumo routers simultaneously. And um, But in this case, we just select one. Um, ah, why not select one more? Uh, we don't have more, but you'll at least see what I'm talking about. So save settings. I now go back to configuration and in the configuration tab, if I go to the far bottom, I need to put in the IP address. And here you can see that I have two Kumo, Kumo routers that I could add IP addresses for. So just guess if I had uh, another one, what I would do. And um, I type in the IP address, which turns out to be 232. So 232. The IP address of the Ethernet GPI link box. It's all good. And uh, I'll save these settings. So now we want to uh, set up the uh, GPI inputs and outputs of the device. So let's start with the inputs because that's, um, of course, very easy. So I'll just input one, two, and three. So we have three inputs for the three buttons, our uh, first buttons on, on my little test um, device. I will now make it route something. So pressing the first uh, or, or short cutting the first GPI trigger will route input number one to output number six. And then I can now copy or basically paste this action in on the next input and just say, okay, now it's input source number two and then insert input source number three. So that's a really neat and quick way to configure your um, your Skahoy devices using uh, copy paste functionality inside the interface. So that's the first thing we, we have now done. So the second thing I want to do is make sure that the, the relays will reflect states of, of routes. So uh, I'll now for output number um, uh, one and let me see, I'll, I hold down shift and then I can select multiple of these. So output one, two and three, I will now assign them to reflect or to be sh uh, shorted when a certain route is uh, set. So what I'll do is to say, okay, so in case that um, input three is on output six, then the first output is lit. In case input 10 is on output five, and the last one would be input 11 on output five. Okay. So output two and three will be mutually, mutually exclusive because um, you can only have one input on output number five. So it's either or the one or the other, but it doesn't matter. You can set it up either way uh, or just as you want. So I'm now saving this setting. And this setting is all made in the app store of Skahoy, meaning that it's not on the controller yet, but will have that uh, downloaded to the Ethernet GPI link simply by pressing check for updates. So check for updates will ask the server to generate a firmware, including the configuration and the support for the Kumo router and bring it onto the device. And um, when this is done, the device will boot up, connect to the panel and show us the functionality we just programmed into it. If we did it right, of course. So we now see it's writing the firmware.
and verifying. And now we're done. Great, so I will open the serial monitor. So the serial monitor will tell me interesting things about the device. So if we just look at what happened up there, you can verify a few things. And uh, you can first of all see the IP address is the one that we expect. We also have the Kumo router right there. And this very important message, it is connected to the AJA Kumo router and it downloads a lot of information about the states in the router. And then this little number is just sort of keep alive signal. It's telling you that the device is alive and kicking. Let's try and press one of these GPI triggers. I now trigger GPI number five and you can see that something called HWC13 is held down and released again. And in fact, that number corresponds to input number five. If you look here, you can see it has the number 13, the hardware component input number five have the, hard, uh, the, the ID 13. So that all makes sense. Now I want you to, to see this close up because now we see, uh, we'll see the action um, come to this, this one. And let's go back to the web interface of the Kumo. We want to um, take a look at how things are routed in, uh, in this one. So I'm now pressing GPI trigger one and trigger two and trigger three. And um, let me see, this is not, uh, oh, it's not connected, right. Because just for a short while I thought, oh no, it doesn't work, but it does. It's just that I needed to disable my Wi-Fi, and now uh, we see it right. So we have the source and the destinations. Let's click, um, let me see if we go here and click monitor six, you can see money, uh, sorry, output number six has currently input number three routed to it. And as I now press input number one, uh, sorry, GPI trigger one, it changes over to input number one corresponding to our configuration. As you remember, for input number one, we said if we press this trigger, route input number one to output number six, and if it's input number two, uh, GPI trigger two, input two to output six. So we should now see as I press this one that source two is routed to six and source three is routed to output six. And we can also see that the little LED, which reflects whether or not a given relay inside the box is uh, active, is actually lit right now. Because what we did for the output, output number one was to say, or to basically set the condition that if input number three is routed to output six, it should be active. And that's exactly what we see right now. So if I go back to output number one, you can see it's turned off. And the, the other two were linked to something else, right? So that was output number five. Let's take a look at output number five. So on output number five, we currently have input number six routed, but we set it up so that the second relay should be uh, turned on if input number 10 was routed to output five. And when I route input 11 to output five, we now see the third relay being switched on. So there you see a GPI solution for the Kumo routers. You can have it in a single version or the dual version I mentioned during the introduction but it's really easy to connect it and you can even connect it to multiple Kumo routers. You can also set a single trigger up to do multiple routes and um, why not do that? So in this case, I, I think I'll rather try to do this in the um, local web interface. So what I did now is to disconnect my Wi-Fi connection to the device. So let's see, I, I, I'm in the field, I don't have internet connection. and. That's uh, an often asked question. What do you do if you don't have access to your app store online? Well, you don't have to because we have a local web interface interface on the devices called local configuration. So when I press local configuration, my web browser will open up the web interface on the device itself. And you see it's sort of the same thing. You just don't have the ability to add support for new devices in the field. You, you would have to be online to do that. But what we can do right now is to change the input to do something else. We could simply add more actions like also route input eight to output nine and also route input um, 
7 to output 14 when I press the first trigger. So that's actually three actions in one. Now, um, as soon as I save this, that setting will get updated on the box. So it's also a really great way in the field to make your configuration work. And I'll show you just in a moment how you can then update it online. So uh, I now made this, these updates and of course I already forgot what I did. So let's just keep this in mind. Output 9 and output 14, input 8 and input 6. So we go over to the Kumo router right here and then we see uh, input... Uh, oh, I forgot it again. It's horrible, getting old. Output 9 and 14. Okay, 9 is 1. 14 is 1. And when I press this trigger, the first one was it, we'll see output 14 now has 7, output 9 now has 8, and output, what was it again? 6 should have input 1. Yes, exactly. So that was three routes in a single GPI trigger on the Ethernet GPI link box. Last question, can that configuration go back online? Yes, if I connect to my Wi-Fi, it's really simple because then in the bottom of the um, of the interface there's a button called sync to course server. What it means is that the configuration I designed on the local web interface will now be pushed back to the central database so that I could share it with other devices, that's one option, or I just have it in a safe position because making new firmware upgrades to the Skyware controllers may uh, delete the local presets you have on them for a number of reasons that might be necessary. Not always, but often it is, in particular if we have yeah, upgrades to the software, then um, they may necessitate removing old configuration. But you can save it in this way, and that's a really powerful feature because you have live updates to the configuration when you're working in the local web interface. Let's get